Good morning and welcome to Holy Family as we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. Our presider is Father Ryan and our gathering song is number 475, Tree of Life. 475. Tree of life and awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every morn. See that dies to rise in glory. May we see ourselves in you. If we learn to live your story, may we die to rise anew. We may die to rise anew. We remember truth once spoken, love passed on through act and word. Every person lost and broken, where's the body of our Lord? Where's the body of our Lord? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your Good morning, everyone. As we gather together today and make our, uh, continue to make our journey through this Lenten season, we remember that it is important for us to repent and to believe in the gospel. So let us pause for a moment today as we ask for God's forgiveness for our sins. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds, and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our responsorial psalm is number 1017. 1017. <laughs> Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and 
compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. In your merciful love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord. He shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble he teaches his way. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Well, a 
very blessed Lent to all of you. I hope that your Lenten journey, is, uh, which has just begun, is, is going well for all of you and that you've been able to uh, continue to uh, remain steadfast in your, your commitments that you've made uh, in this Lenten journey. Last week I had the privilege of celebrating um, my 41st birthday, and it was a, a nice celebration. Uh, last week I had the chance, I celebrated my 41st birthday uh, with my mom, with my dad, and three of my aunts. Yes, that's right. It looked drastically different than the birthday that I had celebrated 20 years prior, but I guess that's maybe what happens when you're in your 40s. It was a great celebration, but I have a kind of a thing that I like to do on my birthday. I kind of like to take a little bit of an inventory. I know a lot of us do like take a New Year's resolution uh, on New Year's, but I like to take a step back on my birthday and, and do something very similar to see just kind of where I'm at in my spiritual life and to be able to see where I've come over this past year and, and kind of where I'm headed. And I, in my journal, I, I make some notes about um, some of the things that I'd like to make sure that I accomplish in the, in the weeks and months that, that lie ahead in this, in this new year of life. And I, I write them down because I like to remind myself of the promises that I have made to myself, the covenants that I, that I kind of hold, uh, hold me accountable to. And it got me thinking this week about the, the first reading that we heard about today, about this covenant relationship that God had with his people that was made known to them a, uh, after the great flood. And this promise that, that God would remain in relationship with his people. And that, that this relationship was founded, was, was going to be founded, not just on, on kind of God's justice, but also on God's mercy and God's love. And it would be found in not, not just a spoken word or written tablets, but, but the covenant was going to be one that was going to be coming into the world in flesh and blood, namely Jesus Christ himself. And so we look to Jesus today and we see that his flesh and blood, that covenant that was promised to us by God, is made real and is made present each and every week here on Sunday. So it's, it's so important for us as Catholics to realize that what we celebrate here today on Sunday is going to be the most important and most perfect thing we can do here on earth. Today our gospel reading reminds us that the kingdom of God is at hand, that we must make, it, make sure that we are urgently preparing for the coming of our Savior. And then the next line reminds us that we are invited to repent and to believe. And one of the most important ways, or one of the most significant ways, I believe that, that we can repent and believe uh, in the gospel message that is shared with us, is to do precisely what Christ asks of us. And in the gospel, when we, when we read it, we know that, that Jesus tells us that we are to take and eat, take and drink. It's the most perfect way that we can enter into his sacrifice, the sacrifice that he offers for us, this great sacrifice of his incredible love. Over this next week, these next few days, our parish is going to be entering into a time of parish mission. This is a time of renewal. And we're very blessed to have a familiar face who will be joining us this year, leading our parish in our parish mission. Father John Lococo is back to lead us in our parish mission. You heard about from him at the start of Mass, but he is actually here in flesh and blood today. So we're going to invite him forward to give us a little bit of a message and to invite you all to our parish mission. I think this is everyone's worst nightmare is two homilies at Mass. <laughs> but it's Lent, so we can all suffer a little bit. Uh, I remember uh, when I was teaching with uh, Colin Petrie, his freshman theology class at St. Mary Springs, um, we had an opportunity to sort of walk through different aspects of the faith. It was more of like a dogmatic introduction to the faith. 
And here I am in my first year uh, sort of back home, having completed my schooling and ready to sort of teach and instruct, sort of like preparing myself and going through the argument that I would make on the board, trying to follow a syllogism that would make sense so that they would accept the conclusion. And so I remember in the span of that time sort of talking about the like physical reality of the resurrection. And I said, and here's premise one, and let's talk about that, and this leads to premise two, and let's talk about that, and therefore we have this conclusion that Jesus infected rays from the dead. And so I remember sort of like sharing this with them, being excited about it, having prepared very well, and it's just like blank faces, blank faces. I say that because at the outset of the National Eucharistic Revival, when I was asked by Bishop Cousins to participate in the revival and having traveled to a number of dioceses and share in this. I use that as an anecdote because this isn't really at the heart of the problem. It's not a failure to catechize properly. In fact, we've never lived in an age in the church in which there is more material available. We have Father Mike Schmitz and Bible in a Year. We've got Hallow and apps and different videos and programs, different books available. If you were a 15th century farmer in France, I mean, you just were left with whatever was being preached to you, right? And so there's so much available, and I realized in that classroom example that it wasn't exactly failing to teach them why or how, but instead teaching them why and how it mattered for them. And so there's something about their hearts that had to be softened to receive those words. And I think for us, too, as your parish gathers in this time of mission, it's an opportunity to, as Father Ryan did on his birthday, thanks for the invitation, by the way, as Father Ryan did on his birthday, is to reassess where he's at. That's what Lent is about. And usually we find ourselves so centered on the repentance part, the discipline and the self-sacrifice, and we forget the believe in the gospel part is part of that same sentence. We discipline and sacrifice so that our belief in the Lord might increase. And so the focus for the mission this year is draw close to the Lord. It's going to be essentially a Eucharistic mission. I'll make some sort of mentions of Lent in the context in which we find ourselves, but really about first drawing in on Adam and Eve in the garden, and the garden as this place of encounter with the Lord, to understand Christ as the true high priest, and to understand the sacrifice of the Mass and the invitation therein. And then now, what are we supposed to do with that? So the three nights are going to be devoted to that. So just as an invitation to come to all three nights, or at the very least, one of the evenings to come for adoration, for community with your brothers and sisters, and also to hear some of those words and perhaps make that reassessment in your own hearts as well. So the why and the how to our faith has to begin first with our hearts being open. And so I look forward just to being with so many of you. And I'm so blessed to be back here and uh, honored by Father Ryan for the invitation. So thank you very much. Thank you, Father John. As uh, he uh, mentioned, too, our mission begins tonight. So uh, we invite all of you back here this evening to join us for our mission. Uh, Father John, you're always welcome to hang out with my aunts whenever you want. So know that it's a standing invitation. Let us all please stand then as we have the confidence and the freedom to profess our faith together and say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Created all things was made, for us and for our salvation, we came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, knowing that our Heavenly Father has called us to repentance so that we may believe in Him more deeply, we have the confidence now to turn to our Father in prayer. Hear our prayer.
shepherds of the church, may the hope of the resurrection sustain them as they carry the cross of leadership. For political leaders, that they may avoid the temptations of power and greed and serve with sincere generosity to those they represent. For those facing the storms of life, that they may see the beauty of the rainbow, a sign of God's profound love. For all on their journey to the Easter sacraments, that they experience the welcome and support of their communities. For those who struggle with addiction, may they seek the resources needed for recovery and find strength and support in our community of faith. For all who have died this week, Elaine Beck, Leo Udy, Jane Gens, Shirley Carl, Joanne Michaud, Francis Villare, and Carmela Shibline, and especially for those remembered at this Mass, Pat and Fan, Fran Brooks, Rita Dieter and family, Earl Dooley, Ben Kraus and Julian Steffes anniversaries, Sharon and Tom Wilhelms and Megan Sager, Harry and Marie McCulloch, McCulloch and Robert Turinsky, and Lorraine Havy. Let us pray. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Heavenly Father, you sent your only begotten Son into the world, into the desert, for 40 days to teach us what it means to fast, so that we may grow in faith in you, as we ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Number 474, From Ashes to the Living Font, 474. From ashes to the living font, your church must journey, Lord, baptized in grace. In grace renewed by your most holy word. Through fasting, prayer, and charity, your voice speaks deep within, returning us to ways of truth and turning us from sin. From desert to the mountain top, in Christ our way we see, so tempered by temptation's might, we might transfigured be. From ashes to the living font, your church must journey still, through cross and tomb to Easter joy, in spirit fire fulfilled.
Please stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis uncelli et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fide. Mortem tuam annunciamus domine, et tuam resurrectionem confitemur. Donec veni. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my Communion song is number 691 on Eagle's Wings. 691. of 
his hand. I do have a few announcements for you this morning. First of all, I'd like to share an invitation with you to join us on April 17th for our Holy Family Gala. Uh, this is an annual event that helps to raise funds for the important ministries here within our parish. Uh, we invite you to join us for um, a night of cocktails and hors d'oeuvres and listening to live music, a chance to bid on an array of unique items and a delicious dinner. Uh, we invite you to also come um, to join us for a special presentation that will be taking place that night. Um, uh, so we'll, it'll be kind of the, the season premiere of this video. So please make sure you uh, come and check that out with us. For more information, please contact even our parish office. And uh, we're looking for trying to get all of our reservations in by February 28th. So if you're able to join us, please consider coming to this year's Holy Family Gala. If you have a heart for ministry, we're looking for somebody to fill our high school faith formation position. If you're interested, please contact Sabina or our parish office, or please visit our website for details on that position. If you are an adult who have, has already been baptized and have received First Reconciliation and First Communion, we invite you to join us for our Adult Confirmation Program. This is an eight-week program that will meet on Wednesdays here at Holy Family. And so if you're an adult that has yet to be confirmed, this is a great program for you, uh, and it helps you to grow in your faith and prepare for the Sacrament of Confirmation. To sign up, please contact Sabina at our parish office. As you know, we, uh, the church has always had a very special relationship with the scouting program, and today we have a scout who is, going to, who is here today to introduce himself and to tell you a little bit about one of the Eagle Scout projects that he's going to be working on right here at Holy Family Church. So uh, I'd like to invite Gabriel forward who will share with us a little bit about his project. Thank you, Father. Good morning. My name is Gabriel Romer from Boy Scouts Troop 777. I'm an eighth grader at St. Mary Springs Academy, and I've been going to Holy Family Parish since my family moved here about five years ago. I'm raising money for my Eagle Scout project. The project consists of landscaping in front of Holy Family offices. I'll be planting shrubs and ornamentals, as well as, put in, as well as putting down topsoil and rock mulch. I plan to have the work completed by early June 2024. As part of the Eagle Scout project, it is my responsibility to raise funds, and I'd greatly appreciate your support. The, pro the project will cost roughly $3,500. If you are interested, I'll be in the narthex after Mass to answer any questions. Thank you. Let's give Gabriel a round of applause. Thank you so much um, for your project and your dedication to the church. Um, as he mentioned, his project is going to take place right here. He's got a really cool looking board uh, in the back of church that's detailing uh, the great work that he's going to be doing here at our parish this summer. So if you'd be kind enough to please at least uh, uh, or please pray for him. And, uh, and if, if you're able to offer him a little bit of financial support this morning, uh, so that his, uh, his project can be a successful one this summer to help beautify our parish. I did want to also note, um, you, you maybe had noticed that there was a little bit of a few different songs we were singing at Mass today during the responses. Um, these, were, these were songs that are, were sung in Latin. And so um, I know that that's kind of something that is new to our parish and something that we haven't really done here before. Um, but it's, it's kind of a response to the, the call, I think, that the Second Vatican Council had to make sure that all of the faithful are educated on, uh, on Latin. And so it's kind of a, uh, a, a kind of a reclaiming, if you will, of some of the, the beautiful music that our church's history has given us. So we're trying it out 
for the season of Lent. We're going to give it a shot and see how it works. If you're interested in learning a little bit uh, and singing along, uh, the numbers are always up on the board. So, um, and the, the Latin phrases, the Latin songs that we sang today are in your hymnals. So you're able to sing along. And, uh, and so it's important, right, that we kind of learn the history of our faith and we kind of embrace uh, the, the fullness of the Catholic Church. And so it's just kind of a beautiful way for us to, to maybe make this Lenten season a little bit more prayerful. So challenge yourself. Learn some Latin, right? And uh, you'll make Pope Francis very happy. So that's great. They use it in Rome all the time. So it's wonderful. Let us all please stand and pray. May bountiful blessings, O Lord, which renew us with this heavenly bread by which faith is nourished and hope increase and charity strengthened, may help us to, to learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 686. Blessed be the Lord. 686. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. He will release me from the nets of all my foes. He will protect me from their wicked hands. Beneath the shadow of his wings I will rejoice to find a dwelling place secure. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves, I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day.